As a kid, maybe you've been bullied in school or you've been abandoned by your parents. Now, when you go out, you feel not good enough or you're scared that other people abandon you and that's why you don't even want to go into relationships. So, every time you want to do something like connect with people, there's an anxiety coming up. The brain brings up number two, an emotion of anxiety. In addition, the brain might bring up thoughts of you're not good enough, you're going to embarrass yourself at the social event, you don't want to get bullied again, just stay at home, it's more safe. The brain does this to protect you because you told the brain back in the day when you got bullied or abandoned, hey, I don't ever want to feel like this anymore. And your brain was like, I'm your best friend. I will protect you. I don't have arms. I don't have legs. I'm a squishy organ. What do I have? Oh, I have emotions, thoughts, and bodily sensations. Okay, next time something close happens to you where it could be dangerous that you could be left like in relationships or you could be judged when you want to start your business on social media, I will give you things I know that you react to to keep you frozen so you don't go in the danger. What can I give you? I know, depression, anxiety, frustration, procrastination. I keep you safe. I'll give you all those things next time. So we know the brain is throwing up things to protect you. Procrastination, anxiety, thoughts. And it knows exactly what thoughts you react to. Now, the funny thing here is the brain doesn't speak language. And human beings might be like, what are you talking about? I speak language. My brain must speak language. Well, let's talk to our brains right now. Could you tell your brain right now that it should stop giving you thoughts about your ex cheating on you? Or stop giving you thoughts about you being bullied in school? Or stop giving you thoughts that you too overweight or not good enough? Tell it to your brain. What's your brain going to say? Sorry. You could have told me that earlier. I'm not going to give you these thoughts anymore. I'm only going to give you thoughts of love and all that. No. Your brain has no clue what you're talking about. It doesn't speak English. It doesn't speak any human language. Does anybody here know what the language of the brain is? What is the language of the brain? What is the language of the brain? RH knows it because you've been on my lives. It's actions, it's behavior, okay? Your brain only knows what you spent your time on. That means if you get up in the morning and you dress in a way to impress others, or you talk in a way to impress others, or you talk in a way to be agreeable, you are telling your brain that you value other people more than yourself. Now, guess what? Your brain is actually your best friend. It wants to support you in doing the things that you love to do. And it sees, it analyzes, oh, what is he or she doing? Oh, he or she is trying to impress another person. Oh, we love valuing other people. Okay, how can I support him or her in valuing other people more? Oh, I know. I give him these emotions that they always react to, to value other people more, which is insecurity, chasing validation, anxiety. The brain doesn't mean bad. It's actually a friend. It supports you in what you spend your time on. So we want to spend our time on different things. Let's say you try to get over heartbreak, right? And you still have heartbreak with you and you have these thoughts. Oh, no, should I have been with him? Did I do things wrong? How can I get him back? But I tell you, hey, you need to do valued actions. You need to show your brain what you really care about. So you need to go out there and play soccer and build your business. But if you play soccer and build your business and you're still checking in your head on, oh, do they miss me? Can I go back to them? You are still doing compulsions. You are not taking your brain with you. You're still in a different time in your head, right? And that will support the compulsions and that will support the insecurity. You were still feeding the old patterns. And that's why mindfulness is so important. Because you can spend your time and energy in your head. And you can spend your time and energy outside of your head. Okay? We want to spend more time outside of your head. Outside of our heads. Doing the things we want to do. That's why we use mindfulness. And mindfulness will also bring a certain calmness over time when you use it. In the beginning, it's going to be harder. Because your brain not going to like it. 
because your brain's like, no, we always worry about things. We have to plan things. We have to map out things. We have to use all these parameters that we always used to protect ourselves. So now when you do mindfulness and you drive in your car and you're only mindfully driving, boredom will come up. Anxiety will come up because you're not listening to music anymore. You're not listening to podcasts anymore. You only focus on driving. Your brain is like, no, we don't only do one thing. That's not okay. We have to think about all the other people and the worries and what our boss is going to say. And we have to prepare a project in our heads. And we have to discuss in our heads how we can still impress others. How can we be cool? How can we be sexy? But if you keep doing that, you're showing your brain that you value other people, which causes the brain to give you more emotions of insecurity. So that's why we want to practice mindfulness. Okay? Dreamer says, driving gives me anxiety. Driving doesn't give you anxiety. Your judgment of driving gives you anxiety. What you want to do is have the anxiety and focus mindfully on driving. Because your thoughts about driving and your thoughts about the emotions that you have about driving causes more of the patterns to come up. So, we want to practice mindfulness. Now, how do we do mindfulness? The question in itself people use to get out of mindfulness because they're like, oh, I need to find the perfect way to be mindful. How can I find the perfect way to be mindful? That's like asking, I have to be good at soccer before I play soccer by figuring out how to play soccer. You will be better at mindfulness once you do mindfulness. Now I'm going to give you guys some tips, okay? Why intrusive thoughts come? Intrusive thoughts come because you're judging them. There are actually no intrusive thoughts. That's why everybody has different intrusive thoughts because you judging a certain amount of thoughts. You're reacting to them and that's why more of them come. You don't like them, you hate on them, all right? So, and this will help you too. What you wanna do is not do compulsions anymore. What are compulsions? When you're in your head trying to chase safety by trying to control situations, by planning how you're going to act when you're at that event where you're going or when you're at that job that you're going to, you're in your head and you're trying to chase safety. And that way you're showing your brain that you're unsafe because why would you chase safety if you're safe? You wouldn't, right? So your brain's like, (gasps) he or she's doing all that work in the head. This must be dangerous. Warning signals. What about negative self-talk? Same thing. We don't have control about the thoughts coming in, but we have control about talking back to the thoughts. And when you stop talking back to the thoughts and focus mindfully on the thing that you're doing, over time your brain learns. So back to the mindfulness. Mindfulness is undoing. It's actually doing less work. It's so beautiful when you practice it over time. When I started practicing mindfulness, I used to listen to music everywhere. I had music in my ear everywhere. The reason, one of the reasons was I had like, a breakup like a long time ago and I didn't want to be with my own thoughts so I listened to music in the car, outside the car, in the grocery store, everywhere. So when I started mindfulness, I stopped listening to music in the car, I stopped listening to podcasts in the car and I only focused on driving. And this seems so insane for our society because our society is insane. I see everybody at the red light, even driving, looking at their phones, scrolling on Instagram because they're such addicts to their urges of their brain. And that will always cause you huge mental health problems. You are a slave to the brain. And the more you are a slave to the urges of the brain, the more you will be emotionally weak. Now, so I started driving and I started mindfully driving without music and podcasts. And it sucked in the beginning, right? First days, it was like, no, you deserve this. No, this feels so uncomfortable. So I was comfortable being uncomfortable. Comfortable being uncomfortable, but focusing always back on mindfully driving. Okay? Always focusing back on mindfully driving. And the brain gives you more excuses. It will give you good excuses. Guess what excuses of good excuses it will give you? No, see, this is not good for you because you need to grow. So you need to listen to Joe Rogan podcast or you need to listen to Michael Singer podcast or you need to listen to those podcasts. Try to trick you. Thought come in, we don't react to it. We focus back on driving with the uncomfortable feeling of boredom. You will get more emotionally fit. You will get more emotionally fit 
because you're with the emotions, but you're focusing mindfully on what you're doing. Over the two weeks, probably two, three weeks, while I, everywhere I went, running, walking, driving, practice mindfulness as good as I could. After two weeks, maybe three weeks, not even, I remember where I was. I was like, damn, I have way less thoughts attacking me. I'm way calmer. And the craziest thing was like, damn, I used to be scared of this. There was a few things that I'm not scared of. I wasn't even thinking about it anymore because this is how much your brain changes. Once you're being comfortable with being uncomfortable and focusing in a new direction. But most people have the biggest problem, which is they cannot be comfortable being uncomfortable. But if you cannot be comfortable being uncomfortable, you will always be a slave to the old patterns. So there's 160 people on this call. Bashar always was a great teacher who said, I can only give you guys this gift, but you are the ones who have to open it. And I take my hands back. People who don't practice mindfulness and who keep going back into the urges and they say, oh, I have just an ADHD brain and I need to go on social media, which makes the ADHD worse. We'll get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker. A lot of times we'll get on pills, create themselves a new identity where they create more excuses. We'll have all kinds of go to therapists, psychologists. They're going to diagnose them as bipolar and having ADHD. Then they have a new identification, but really they created it because they try to control the anxiety. They try to isolate themselves, not doing the things they value, which causes them to be more depressed because now they don't have a support system anymore. They are chasing emotions, which gets the emotion out of place, high and lows all the time. And there will be some of you guys. There will be some of you guys who might hear this now and you might keep going on with your days. You might keep going on with your weeks. And maybe on some point you have enough pain where you're like, damn, let me try this out. Then you remind yourself back and you try this out. You practice it and you really practice it. And you really practice having the anxiety and starting your podcast, doing the things you value mindfully, pushing social media till the end of the day because we know when we start our day with compulsions, we're going to continue the day with those compulsions and during the day you just do things that you want to grow it doesn't only have to be work because we also want to grow relaxation we want to grow fun and you will see the change and there will be some of you who will do this practice this after this talk and keep practicing it but the importance is to keep practicing it because to say oh i practice mindfulness today Saying I did mindfulness today and doing it one day in a week is like saying, oh, I trained once now. Am I going to be buff for 365 years, 365 days? Certainly you will not be. But if you keep going, if you keep being mindful, if you stop being comfortable with all the emotions and stop judging them, the worst thing that society told you is that you can only be healthy when you're happy. Because by telling you this, you're making all the other emotions an enemy. You're judging those emotions and you're trying to make them feel better and you're hurting your mental health. Change your relationships with the emotions. Accept them. Be comfortable being uncomfortable and do the things that you value. That doesn't mean you always be uncomfortable. You're going to have more, more joy along the way. More emotional fitness. A better relationship with emotions. Mindfulness is really a practice to answer your question, Nate.